Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us at the Provincial Emergency Coordination Centre for today's update on the Alberta wildfires. We'll begin with remarks from Colin Blair from the Alberta Emergency Management Agency, and then Jose Senange from Alberta Wildfire, and then we will take your questions. So I'll throw it over to you, Colin. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Alberta continues to be under a provincial state of emergency, and the Provincial Emergency Coordination Centre remains at level four. In addition to the provincial emergency, there are 19 states of local emergency, as well as five ban council resolutions and 14 evacuation orders. Approximately 19,342 Albertans remain evacuated at this time, and there are nine reception centers that have registered evacuees. That is an increase in the number of evacuees due to three new evacuation orders in the past 24 hours, Rainbow Lake, Leduc County, and Sturgeon Lake First Nation. Those who have been evacuated should register at the nearest reception center or online. So far, more than 15,000 people have registered. Registering will make it easier to get help and resources to evacuees, and it makes it easier for officials to reach residents with important information. The wildfire situation is extremely volatile. Hot and dry conditions throughout much of Alberta present an ever-increasing risk of new wildfires starting and the potential for current wildfires to grow quickly. This situation represents a significant and unpredictable threat to many communities in our province. For those who are in a community that's on an evacuation alert, I cannot stress strongly enough the need for residents to be prepared in case there is an urgent need to evacuate. Things can change quickly and an evacuation order may be issued with little warning. I want to reinforce the importance of being prepared for oneself, one's loved ones and one's pets. We've got great information how to prepare for an evacuation available on the Alberta government website. You can also find Alberta emergency alerts by visiting the emergency alert site. Preparing in advance will keep residents and their loved ones safe. We encourage all Albertans in potentially impacted communities to stay informed by paying attention to the emergency alerts and local news updates and to follow their local authorities social media accounts and download the Alberta emergency alert app. Everyone should know what to do, where to go and how to stay in touch with each other for those who are not together or at home when an evacuation order is issued. Residents should also remember to stay connected with neighbours and community members. Contact from friends and neighbours during an emergency can help us all stay safe and feel supported. In your preparation, it is crucial to pack an emergency kit that will last for a week or more with essential items like medication, identification, a first aid kit, flashlights, batteries, non-perishable food, cash, and clothing. The kit should be kept in an accessible location. And please, have a plan for your pets. Consider how you'll gather and transport your pets, where you'll go, and what you'll bring, including items such as their food, medication, leashes, and carriers. You can find more tips and information online at alberta.ca. We have also heard from Albertans who are concerned about the security of their home and property if they must evacuate. Alberta RCMP provides tips on their website on how Albertans can protect their properties in advance of being evacuated. And it includes updates on what the RCMP are doing in specific areas. Those in affected areas by wildfires are encouraged to opt in to this free voluntary system. These are trying times and the coming days may be quite difficult. We are all doing all we can to protect communities at risk, but Albertans need to remain vigilant and closely follow updates on their current wildfire situation. It is critical to observe all fire bans and to stay connected with your local communities. The safety of yourself, your family and your fellow Albertans depends upon it. Please download the Alberta Emergency Alert application to your mobile device to receive emergency alerts and important information. These are just a few key updates, but more information on how to prepare and emergency alerts are available online at alberta.ca slash emergency. 
We continue to work closely with local officials and responders in affected communities to get personnel, resources and equipment where they are needed. Finally, I'd like to share the details on the Teletown Hall tonight. The call begins at 7.30 p.m. for wildfire evacuees to get the information they need. Thank you. And I'll now turn things over to Jose from Alberta Wildfire for more information on the provincial wildfire situation. Thank you, Colin. There are 87 active wildfires in the forest protection area of Alberta, and 24 of them are out of control. So far this year, we've responded to 451 wildfires that have burnt more than 521,000 hectares. You can get up-to-date numbers by accessing our interactive map on the Alberta Wildfire Status page. We are continuing to see hot and dry conditions today with little chance of rain throughout most of Alberta. Temperatures in the north of the province are expected to reach the upper 20s with low humidity. We're expecting winds between 10 and 20 kilometers per hour in most of the boreal forest area, with gusts around 40 kilometers per hour in the north. The fire danger is extreme again today. As expected, we saw an increase in fire activity yesterday due to these hot and dry conditions. The interior of wildfires can flare up as previously unburnt vegetation catches fire. These flare ups produce smoke that can impact visibility. While some wildfires grew yesterday, overall, our firefighters were able to hold their ground. But they will be challenged again today. Our peak burning period, which is when the temperatures are at their highest and the fuels are at their driest, is still in front of us. We are using all of the resources at our disposal to fight these wildfires and keep people and communities safe. We currently have over 1,500 Alberta wildland firefighters, heavy equipment and air tankers responding to wildfires in the province. Helicopter operators are also supporting their efforts by dropping water on hotspots with their buckets. An additional 200 wildland firefighters from the United States have arrived in Alberta and are being deployed. They've come from Oregon, Montana, Idaho, Washington, South Dakota and Colorado. They're joining wildland firefighters from agencies across North America that are already hard at work. We continue to receive assistance from the military as well. In total, more than 800 people from other agencies are helping us fight these wildfires. We are very thankful for their help. The wildfire danger is extreme in most of Alberta and will continue to increase in the coming days. The fire danger is also climbing in the south of the province. We thank Albertans for doing their part to prevent human-caused wildfires. Given the conditions, we urge everyone to continue respecting the fire ban and off-highway vehicle restriction that's in place for the forest protection area of Alberta. We want to focus our firefighting efforts on existing wildfires instead of responding to new ones. Thank you. As there are no questions in the room, I think we will go to Francois, who's on the line from Radio Canada. Francois. Oh, hi, everyone. A um, couple of questions. I'm hoping uh, we can get uh, José in French and uh, in English as well on, on, on them. So first of the questions was, uh, how has this gone? Uh, how has this weekend gone compared to what you guys were expecting? Uh, are we on track to what you were planning or is this better or worse? So I'll answer in English first and then um, say it again in French. So, so far this weekend, we were expecting high wildfire activity and an increase in fire behavior throughout the province. And that is what we're seeing on the ground. Our crews have had the um, opportunity to work at building fire guards and containment lines around wildfires. And for the vast majority, those are holding. So they are in a good position to continue making progress, but we are expecting ch uh, challenging con conditions to continue. And um, that will uh, be the case for the next few days um, as these hot, dry conditions persist. 
nous, euh, nous avons vu des conditions extrêmes dans la province hier et ça continue aujourd'hui. C'est euh, causé par du vent, de la chaleur et des conditions extrêmement sèches. Alors, on s'attendait à voir de l'activité de feu qui s'intensifie dans la plupart de la province et c'est ce qu'on a vu. Mais grâce à... Les, les progrès que nos pompiers ont pu faire dans les derniers jours à construire des coupe-feu et des lignes d'arrêt autour des feux. Nous sommes dans une bonne position pour continuer à les défendre et on a fait des progrès cette fin de semaine. François, did you have a follow-up? Uh, yeah, and same thing, same, same thing again, uh, both languages, if possible. Do you guys see any peak in view? Like, is there, is there any moment you're going to be able to say, like, we've passed the peak of, uh, of, this, uh, of this fire crisis, or is that going to be continuing in the same pace for weeks? It's too soon to say when we're going to see the peak of this wildfire season. From what we can tell from the conditions that are awaiting us with uh, hot and dry weather persisting, we are going to continue to be challenged. So we haven't seen a peak yet. Uh, conditions will remain hot and dry and windy in the coming days. So we're expecting more challenging conditions um, as we progress in this heat event. No, um, oh, let me collect my thoughts in French. So, um, je dirais qu'il est trop tôt pour uh, pouvoir dire si on a vu le, la crête de cette, uh, de cette uh, situation de feu avec les conditions chaudes et sèches qu'on voit présentement et qui vont continuer pendant plusieurs jours. On s'attend à ce que la situation continue de rester uh, difficile et um, va continuer à, à causer um, beaucoup de travail pour nos pompiers. Alors, il est trop tôt pour parler d'avoir atteint un plateau dans la saison de feu. Uh, on voit des conditions très chaudes et sèches qui vont continuer. Donc, on s'attend à avoir... Uh, davantage d'activités de feu sur euh, l'étendue de la province dans les prochains jours, peut-être même les semaines. Thank you, José. Uh, next in the queue, we have Anna from Reuters. Anna? Hi, thank you so much. Um, I was wondering, we know about the incident in Grand Prairie. Apart from that, have there been any incidents of residents trying to f fight fires on their own and either getting in the way of a firefighting crews or just putting themselves in danger? And if so, what have those incidents been? Hello, Anna. That's a, that's a great question. Yes, you know, we are aware of the one that happened in the county of Grand Prairie. And while I don't have other specific examples, I think the message is important here that uh, these are complex situations that require close coordination. And again, we urge Albertans that uh, if they're keen on volunteering and supporting, they do need to get in touch with their local authority, or they can send an email to Alberta Emergency Supports at gov.abca to indicate their, their desire to assist. From there, uh, they need to wait and be patient as we work through processing this. So it's happening at not only the provincial level, but also the local level, but they need to be patient and wait because we want to pull resources, we don't want to push resources. The local responders need to be in control of the situation, so they will pull as they require. Thanks. Anna, do you have a follow-up? Yeah, thank you. Have you gotten a lot of people contacting you um, through those methods, wanting to contribute, wanting to volunteer? Hi, Anna. I, I can say at the provincial level, uh, we've received 300 emails. Uh, these are being processed. We're checking to make sure that people are qualified and capable and the resources are available. From there, that information is be being provided to the key departments. So we're coordinating this at the Emergency Coordination Centre and sharing it with lead departments. Again, uh, as resources are required, those people will be contacted uh, if and when they're needed. Thanks, Colin. Next in the queue, we have Julia from CBC. Julia, go ahead. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Um, the province has brought in firefighters and I imagine still looking for more. We've spoken with municipalities who say they want more support from the province, but they're going on their own and they're privately contracting uh, firefighters as well. And I can only imagine that everyone is drawing from the same pool. I wonder if you can talk about the competition that there is right now for firefighters. Uh, 
Hi, Julia. Thank you very much for that question. Again, this is why we have the Emergency Coordination Centre at Level 4. We do have representatives from the key departments, including forestry, uh, as well as the Canadian Armed Forces. And that is where some of this coordination occurs. We have field officers that connect in with each of the municipalities, First Nations and Métis settlements that are impacted. So this is happening on a, coordinate, uh, on a daily basis. I, I can expect that uh, there, there are opportunities uh, for people to be able to connect at various levels. Uh, but part of this is maintaining situational awareness about where the resources are and who is using them. And then as this situation progresses, is having better coordination and, uh, and sharing of those resources. Thanks, Colin. Julia, go ahead if you have a follow-up. Yes, I do. I'm just wondering if we're not even close to the peak yet, how do you keep morale up um, with these fire crews if they could potentially be putting these fires out for months and months to come? There's no doubt that our firefighters are working extremely hard right now. They've been working around the clock since these uh, wildfires started to try to bring the situation under control. And there's a lot of work ahead of them still. We're extremely thankful for their efforts. Um, as far as keeping morale up, I think everyone that uh, is out there realizes how important their role is. And uh, we're extremely thankful for what they're doing. And uh, Although there is a lot of work ahead, we feel that uh, we'll be able to, uh, to weather it and continue working as hard as we have until all wildfires are extinguished. Thank you, Jose. Uh, next caller is Rob from Canadian Press. Rob, go ahead. Hi. Jose mentioned rising risk of fires in the south now. Um, I'm wondering, are there any areas in particular you're looking at, and what will the province do if it has to then also fight fires in the south as well as the north? So the heat event that we're seeing in the province is starting to impact the south as well. So that means that conditions are drying out and wildfire danger is rising. Uh, we're not quite at the same extreme levels in the south as we are in the north. But as that uh, fire danger keeps, keeps climbing, the way we prepare is that we position our resources in strategic places so that they're able to react quickly to new wildfire starts. So we'll be analyzing the situation in the coming days, seeing where the fire danger is the highest and moving our resources around appropriately to be able to respond to any new wildfires that may start in the south of the province. But it's important to remember that Albertans can play a big role in preventing human-caused wildfires. So we ask everyone to be extremely vigilant and to continue following the fire ban that's in place and the off-highway vehicle restriction. Rob, go ahead if you have a follow. Yes, uh, I'm figuring that uh, most of these resources you're talking about are going to be in the north right now. W would that mean taking some resources away from the north uh, to fight fires in the south? We are always moving our resources around and adjusting to emerging wildfires and uh, fire danger changing. So even though most of our resources obviously right now are concentrated in the boreal forest, we still have crews that are in position in our Rocky Mountain and Calgary forest areas. So they will be available to respond to new wildfire starts. And then if we see wildfires uh, growing rapidly in that part of the province, we will have to reposition some of our resources. That does mean that uh, people that are working in different places will have to be moved around, but we continue to have resources coming from other jurisdictions as well, and they'll be able to help with that work. Thanks, Jose. We'll go to Amanda from CTV. Sorry, I was just trying to unmute there. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, still on resources, um, I mean, with the fire risk in BC, if things flare up there, what does that mean for our resources? Are we going to lose firefighters here in the province? Will American crews be redeployed? Can you speak to that? So 
So it is usual and expected for wildfire seasons to increase in other jurisdictions as the summer goes on. So it is something that we're expecting and prepared for. These partnerships exist between provinces and other agencies for that very reason. So it's something that we will address when the time comes, but we do feel that within North America and all the resources that are available to us, we'll be able to keep getting enough people to continue fighting these wildfires uh, as the situation evolves. Amanda, go ahead if you have a follow. I'm good, thank you. Thank you. Uh, that concludes our questions today. So thank you to our uh, experts who joined us and all of the media. Appreciate it.